Hi there, so it's Physics Error Thursday and this week I've got for you a really common one, powers of 10 error. So not really knowing how to convert, for example, from kilowatts into watts. That's a really common one, especially at GCSE, where you need to be able to convert between kilowatts and watts. So this direction is you've been given kilowatts and you need it in watts. So I'm suggesting you see that killer as just times by a thousand. It means a thousand off. So a kilowatt is a thousand watts. So, in fact, if you've got 2.2 kilowatts, then all you need to actually do is think of it as 2.2 times 1,000 watts, so 2,200 watts. Now, there's other prefixes, obviously, that you need to be aware of. For example, milli, and this one I've done as millivolts, which is a common conversion. And milli means a thousandth, and you can remember that a millimetre is a thousandth of a metre. That's something that you're used to using. So, millivolts would be times a thousandth times 0.001 of a volt. So 400 millivolts, for example, is 400 times 0.001 volts, or 0.4 volts. And the more you practice that, the easier it will be. Now obviously you don't always just have to go in that direction where there is a prefix. Sometimes you're asked to give your answer with a certain prefix. So if you've got watts, or let's say you need to use kilowatts to work out energy in kilowatt hours, then you're going to need to be able to convert from watts into kilowatts. Here we go. This time we do the inverse of what the unit is. So if it's a thousand of, then we need to do divide by a thousand. So for example, 660 watts is 660 divided by a thousand kilowatts, or it's 0.66 kilowatts. And the more you do these, the easier they are going to become. I do promise that. It is just a matter of getting used to it. It is a bit that you do in GCSE maths, I know that. Um, and it, when you first come across it, it's quite complicated. But after doing lots of practice, you, I'm sure you can all do it. So now I'm going to just ask you really to know your prefixes. Know what your prefixes mean, because sometimes they won't tell you. So here's some common ones. These are ones that are bigger than one. Okay, so the first prefix, killer, means a thousand of, or times 10 to the 3. And if you know how to use your calculator properly, that's your shortcut, your um, standard form shortcut. Mega means a million of, so 1 and then 6 zeros, or times 10 to the 6. And I'm suggesting that you write out your numbers in groups of 3 zeros, because those are the ascending uh, prefixes, are always in just add another 3 zeros, okay? Um, and now we're getting on to giga, and these are the ones that you need to know at A level, um, but don't necessarily need to know at GCSE, but you might be given and expected to use. So giga is nine zeros, there we go, one billion times ten to the nine, in other words. So you can just think of giga as whatever the number is, and then nine zeros on the end, but be careful with the decimal place if you're doing it that way. I would encourage you to use that standard form button on your calculator. And terra is 12 zeros, so a trillion, or times 10 to the 12. And on the flip side, well, getting smaller. So micro, milli, nanny, uh, sorry, micro, milli, nano, and pico. And milli is a thousandth, we've done that one, times 10 to the minus 3. Micro is uh, a millionth, times 10 to the minus 6. Nano is a billionth, times 10 to the minus 9. And pico is a trillionth. So times 10 to the minus 12, and you see that's 12 zeros before the one there. Now this bit is exclusively for A-level, so GCSE students, you, you might be interested in this, but you might not. Okay, this is about converting from non-SI into SI units when we're talking about particle physics. I'm stood in front of my standard model here, which is all of the particles that are in the universe that we know about. Um, so, sometimes you may be given a unit, for example, this is the energy um, of a Higgs boson, in a non-SI unit, it's easier to think of the energy in what we call electron volts over C squared. Sorry, I'm saying energy, and because it's over C squared, it's mass. So this is the mass, mass energy, this is the mass of a Higgs boson when it was found in the um, LHC. So 126 giga electron volt over C squared. When you're converting from non-SI into SI, I suggest you just think of that unit as a formula. Okay, so 
beneath it, I've written it all out. So 126 times 10 to the 9, that's the giga, times, times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, that's the electron. There is the volt there, but it's times 1 volt, so we just leave that out. And then divided by c squared, which is 9 times 10 to the 16, so that's that second line there. And then that answer comes out as 2.24, just smudged out my decimal there, 2.24 times 10 to the minus 25 kilograms. Now that's a really good example of when you should just check, see, is my answer sensible? The first answer I got for that was, in fact, an absolutely massive number, okay? It was like millions of kilograms. And I realized, well, okay, I must have done something wrong because it's definitely not millions of kilograms that Higgs boson. Um, so I, I went back through my calculation and because I set it out like that, I could see actually in the calculator I put times 10 to the minus 16. So that's a good way to check your errors. Okay, and what if you want to do the opposite way around? You want to go from SI units into non-SI units. Well, you do the inverse of the unit that you want. So if you have got kilograms and you want it in electron volts over C squared, then you do the inverse. So instead of divided by C squared, you've got times by C squared. So this is the rest mass of a proton. Uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So if I want that in electron volts, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 27 times c squared, times 9 times 10 to the 16, and then divided by charge on electron, it would be divided by 1 volt as well, but we'll leave that out. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 gives me 9.39 times 10 to the 8 electron volt over c squared. Is that sensible? Yeah, that is. That's just beneath a kind of giga electron volt over C squared. That's a kind of uh, value that you would expect if you had three uh, quarks all joined together. Okay, I'm happy with that conversion. I hope that helps. It is a really important one for both GCSE and A-level. Knowing your powers of 10 and knowing how to convert between your units. It just takes practice, just like maths. The more of these you do, the more confident and comfortable you're going to be with them. Best of luck, kids. Thank you for watching Gorilla Physics. Please do like, share and subscribe. That really helps me be more useful to more people. Also, please go ahead and check out Gorilla Chemistry and Gorilla Biology. You can expect the same sorts of things, past paper questions and videos to help you understand topics. Thanks once again for watching.